Alhamdulillah, wassalam, wassalam Allah, wa rasulullah. Welcome to our series on the lawful and unlawful things in Islam. The lawful and the unlawful things in Islam. And a lot of Muslims are not aware of the reality that as Muslims, we're obligated. It's an obligation for us to know what's lawful and what's unlawful when it comes to our everyday life. We should know what things we can and cannot eat. We should know what we can and cannot wear. We should know what things that we can and cannot engage in. And that's what we're gonna be speaking about today and tomorrow, the lawful and the unlawful in regards to recreation and play. In regards to recreation and play, uh, we get a lot of questions about things like this. Is it haram to do sports? Is it haram to play games? Is it haram to joke? Is it haram to be happy? Well, let's take a look at it. Let's put the PowerPoint up on the screen for tonight's discussion. And uh, inshallah, you guys should be able to see my screen. So we're gonna be speaking about the lawful and unlawful in regards to recreation and play. I want you guys to understand that as Muslims, our way of life is a practical way of life, okay? What does that mean? That means that not only do we spend our life, uh, part of our time worshiping Allah, but also Allah allows us to enjoy the good things that he made lawful for us here on this earth too, okay? Unlike other people's beliefs, as Muslims, we know that we are not angels, okay? Allah gave us something that he didn't give angels, which is free will. The angels are created to do whatever Allah commands them to do. We are created to worship Allah, to prove our belief in him, and also he put us here to enjoy the things he made lawful for us. So in other words, what Islam uh, teaches us is that there's a time for this and a time for that. This is something that our prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, emphasized to us. We have a wonderful hadith that you guys have heard me mention before. Uh, the hadith, whereas, uh, Abu Bakr, radiallahu anha, happened to come upon another companion. And he asked him, how are you? And the companion said, oh, astaghfirullah, Abu Bakr, I am a hypocrite. And Abu Bakr said, subhanallah, why would you say that about yourself? And the companion said, when we are with the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he reminds us of the hellfire. And he reminds us of paradise as if we can see them. But then when he's done talking and we leave and go home, we play with our wives. We play with our children and we busy ourselves with our businesses and we forget a lot. And when he said that, Abu Bakr said, Supana Allah, I experienced the same thing. So he and this other companion together went to visit the prophet. And um, uh, uh, the, the, the man who Abu Bakr was with said, oh, prophet of Allah, I'm a hypocrite. And the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, why would you say that? And he told him, cause when we're around you, we remember Allah, we remember the hellfire. But when we leave you, we go and play with our children. And it's like, we forget the things you said. The prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at this companion and he said, don't you know that if you were to continue to stay at the same level that you are with when I am remembering Allah with you, then the angels, would shake your hands with you. He said, don't you know that there's a time for this and a time for that? A time for this and a time for that. 
a time to pray, a time to sleep, a time to be sad, a time to grief. SubhanAllah, this is one of my favorite hadiths. What the prophet meant when he said, if you were to walk around in a state of remembrance of Allah 24 hours, you would be like the angels. We're not angels. We're human. We have a time to pray, a time to rest, a time to have fun, a time for this. Everything is within balance. As Muslims, everything we do is within balance. We're not too far to the extreme right, nor are we too far to the extreme left. We're balanced between all of that. So it's okay to have fun with your wife. It's okay to play spades. Subhanahu Allah, I was online. You guys know I'm a bid whisk person, but I find it strange that very few people know how to play bid whisk. So my second game is spades. So I was online playing spades the other day, four o'clock in the morning, minding my business. I don't hide who I am. I'm Layla Nasheba. Sitting there, I lost a hand online. So my partner left. I was like, okay, wasn't no good partner anyway. Sitting there counting my cards. Somebody pops in the chair across from me. Person says, Layla Nasheba, what you doing playing spades? Looked up, it was one of my students here. One of y'all. I ain't gonna say her name. I said, I'm, it's a time for this and a time for that. I said, didn't I teach y'all today? W weren't you at the six o'clock class? Yeah. Weren't you at the uh, nine o'clock class? Yeah. Well, it's four o'clock in the morning. I'm getting my spades on. I say, either you play or get up. And if I lose, I'm gonna hold you to it. Cause I take my card playing serious and I don't talk across the table. She shut up and we played, we lost, but we played, okay? So there's a time for this. Who walks around remembering a law 24 hours? We got to release ourselves. It can't be about the dawah all the time. Subhanallah, Allah, I'm reminding people about a lot of time. Let me refresh. Let me get my head. Let me release myself. Okay. And spades is a good way to do that for me because it inv involves thinking. So our prophet taught us that everything with us as Muslims is within moderation. And even our prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was human. He was the perfect example for us. When he was by himself, he would worship Allah with intense devotion. He would stand for long hours during the night praying. But in his living habits and his dealings with others, he was a human being. He enjoyed good things. He used to participate in small talk. He used to smile, he used to laugh, he used to even joke, but he never lied, okay? Our prophet Muhammad liked happiness just like anyone else. He disliked grief like anyone else. He used to seek refuge with the law whenever he was troubled or stressed out, okay? Just like we do. He used to say, oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from distress and grief. That's something that we need to do. Instead of being such a depressing person, ask Allah, seek refuge in Allah from that. And also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a sense of humor. We have an, an example of his humor. An old woman came to him one day and she said, oh Prophet of Allah, Pray for me to enter paradise. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked at her and he said, you will never, there will be no old women in paradise. And when he said that her expression went blank and she began to cry. And he said, no, 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 I didn't mean that. 
He said, no one from this world will enter paradise old. We will all be the age of 32 when we enter paradise. And then she became happy and smiled. She said, I'll be back young and youthful and beautiful. He said, yes. So that's an example as to how he used to joke. You know, he had a sense of humor. Okay, so again, our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, taught us that there's nothing wrong with laughing. Nothing wrong with joking as long as everything is within balance, as long as we're not transgressing the limitations of Allah. And the prophet used to engage in games and stuff too. Let me share uh, a few hadiths from the companions with you about this topic. The companions, they enjoyed laughter, play, and sports too. They used to relax their body and their minds. In fact, listen to what Ali, radiallahu anha, said. He said, the mind becomes tired just like the body does. So treat your mind with humor. Refresh your mind from time to time with laughter because a tired mind will become blind. So again, you'll hear some of these fanatical Muslims, like if I'm sitting in my Zoom room with my students talking, we like to tell jokes, we laugh, we have fun. Some fanatical Muslim who's uneducated will come in here and say, oh, stuck for law, you people going to hell because y'all laughing. So who said we going to hell because we laugh? The prophet used to laugh. In fact, laughter keeps the heart alive. Laughter keeps the heart, you know, uh, aware. Why do you want to kill yourself by being so dead and so dry and so harsh? Okay. Also, we have a hadith from Abu Darda. He said, I entertain my heart with something trivial just to make it stronger in the service of Allah. The same with me. Like I told that sister who sat down across from me on online to play spades. I said, spades relaxes me. You know, this is when I release my, my, myself with spades, I can come back and give you a better lecture tomorrow. And I told her we'll be talking about the lawful and the unlawful in regards to recreation this weekend. And here we are. Okay. So again, guys, you know, entertain your heart with something trivial to keep it stronger in the service of Allah. So there is nothing wrong with us relaxing our mind or refreshing ourselves with sports and play. But the thing is to not forget our religious obligations. You don't want to get so caught up in playing spades or bid whist that you forget to pray your prayers. You don't want to get so caught up in sports that you forget to pray. And even when we laugh and joke, don't laugh or joke about serious things. Don't make fun of our marriage. Don't make fun of, of our way of life. Season your conversation, your, season your conversations with humor in the same way that you season your food with salt. You know, make it, you know, where it's not too much and not too little, it's just right. Don't make fun of people. Don't make a, say things about people that can hurt them. As the law tells us in the interpretation, the meaning, oh, you who believe, do not make fun of some people because it may be that the people you make fun of are better than you. And don't tell jokes about things that's untrue just to make people laugh. So as long as we don't transgress the limits of a law, there's nothing wrong with laughing. There's nothing wrong with joking as long as we do it within, with taste, with dignity, and within the, the concept of uh, Allah's laws. And the same with sports. Our prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, encouraged uh, sports. The companions used to uh, deal with sports. They used to race, they used to run. And the prophet encouraged them in this. Ali, radiallahu anha, was very fast as a runner. 
And even our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to race with his wife Aisha just to set an example that there's nothing wrong with this. We have the hadith where as Aisha said, I raced with the prophet and I beat him. This is when I was young. Later, when I put on some weight, we raced again and he won. And he said, this cancels the fact that you beat me when you were younger. So that shows the prophet even had fun with his wives. Also another sport the companions would engage in is wrestling. Even our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to wrestle. He once wrestled with a man named Rukana who was well known for his strength. But the prophet threw him down to the ground more than once and beat him. And this was before gambling was out loud, outlawed. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with sports too, as long as the sports are not uh, things that would transgress the limits of a law. The prophet encouraged this. The companions even did archery. Okay. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once passed by a group of companions who were competing in archery. He encouraged them. He told them, shoot and I am with you. Because he knew that archery was not just a hobby, but it was also a way to keep yourself strong. If the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were living today, he'd probably do archery and, and guns and he probably had, uh, uh, encouraged the people to do martial arts because as Muslims, we have to be able to defend ourselves. Okay. In fact, we have a hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, practice archery because it's good for you. So he would tell us practice martial arts practice going to the gun range and shooting because this is good for us. As long as we don't use another uh, creature of a law as a target. As long as we don't use an animal, a bird or another human being as a target. So as you can see guys, Islam is not just a religion but it's also a beautiful balanced way of life you know we're not angels none of us can spend all our time just talking about a law worshiping a law come on you get bored you get tired of that put some salt into your life have some fun relax take some time out if you're a woman like me i don't go anywhere i don't have a husband I relax by playing spades online. That's my hobby. Everybody knows me well knows Layla's gonna go online and play spades with real people because that's how I release it. I also exercise. I love to exercise. I exercise at least three days a week because it keeps my body fit. It also keeps my mind sharp, okay? And I love to play, to joke. I'm a very, very funny person. I like to tell jokes. I like to reminisce. I like to laugh and all that. And I do that on the Zoom room with the people closest to me. So again, I don't want any of you new shahadas believing that just because we're Muslims, we have to be unhappy. You That happiness doesn't exist for us. We can't laugh. We can't smile. We can't be beautiful. We can't. We can't. We can't. Uh uh. The reality is we can, we can, we can. It's just that we have to educate ourselves as to what we can do and learn what limitations there may be in doing them. Okay, so I'm going to stop right here for tonight. Tomorrow for this class, I'm going to go over some more uh, things like playing games. Uh, can we play chess? and things like that. We're going to talk about that and what type of games the companions played uh, during their time. So I'm going to stop right here. Supana